ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Salvage Workshop. This is day two of the work on the old Alice 645. So the plan today is to see if we've got fuel getting to the injection pump, figure that out. If we do, I believe our injection pump is probably plugged or stopped up with old diesel. Also, if you haven't caught the small series on getting the old Caterpillar number six shovel up and running, Check that out as well. I guarantee you'll enjoy it. It was a fun project and I truly enjoyed it as I am doing this one. And I hope you'll stick around with me long enough to get this old beast up and moving again. We'll drive it onto a trailer and we'll get it back to the shop. So together, let's keep going on this journey and we'll see what else we need to do. Welcome to Salvage Workshop. It is looking more and more like rain. It was looking that way on the drive in and I pretty much drove right into it. But one advantage to finding machines undercover, whether in a barn or a lean-to or something, is that you can work in the rain usually. If it's not ridiculously bad. So that's what we've got here. So kind of set up. We're gonna start by checking the fuel supply coming out of the tank, then to the fuel filter, on into the injection. All right, so this one is the supply for the fuel tank to the filter, and this is the return line from the injection pump. There's another wire not being used. So we're gonna clean this up just a slight bit, pull this fitting off, See if it's plugged, see if there's any diesel or water down there in the diesel. Same with this return line. I mean, it looks pretty clean. And the flow out of that fitting coming out of the tank is good. Come on. All right, let's try the return line. There we go. Pretty good flow out of that. Nice and clean, red diesel. I do not think that's our problem. All right, now we're gonna take off this line to the fuel filter. Well, the line's not clogged. See if I can blow air through this. Yep, I hear it in the tank. So that line is fine to this point. This filter looks like it's been on there for ages. I'm gonna stick this line just here for now. Take off that filter and see what we've got under there. All right, let's see if we can get this uh, filter off without ruining it. Um, definitely already made some holes in this thing, but whatever. It is 
leaking, but I got the pan down there, so it should be fine. Mm, man. Well, at this point, it's time to use the hammer and screwdriver method. Now this thing has these rubber protectors on it. They're going bye-bye. See, it's got metal teeth and they had molded plastic over it. Here. It says it's been on filter. Why won't you come off? Uh, I think what we're gonna do is only two bolts to remove this filter bracket. We'll take the line that goes to the injector pump off, and I'll mess with that off the machine. I don't want to break the housing. I don't care about the filter. Must be metric. That's interesting. Yeah, I think it's metric. Wonderful, I love it when a machine starts mixing standard and metric. And there's our housing. Well, this thing was definitely in the machine during a repaint at one point because the filter's yellow. Not sure what brand filter this is. It's blue. That's an Alice Chalmers filter. I'm wondering if that's the original one. It says AC right there. Contact two-thirds after contacting the gas it check for leaks. Huh. Well, we have a leak. See? Man, that filter coming out, or that fuel coming out of there is dirty. Huh. Well, I ruined that one. Let's just hope one of the ones I brought is the right screw-on style. Hear that thunder out there? Getting close. I'm ripping this filter in half. Come on. There we go. Yeah, there's no way I would have gotten that off on the machine. All right, I cleaned up the fuel filter housing a little bit. It's about to come pouring on me now, but got that cleaned up. I brought two filters, but that's a way bigger hole than that one. Let's see if this one is. Yep, way too big. So I'm gonna take this with me to the parts store and find a filter. Here it comes, you hear it? Let it rain. I'm pretty dang sure that the injection pump is not seized up, but there's some stuff sticking in there, especially these rollers. So to get it out, you gotta set it to top dead center and then you can remove it. And you do that by looking at the timing marks on this little uh, panel here that I removed. So I'm gonna set this to top dead center. We'll get the lines off. We'll get the linkage off for the throttle. 
we'll get the supply and return lines off and then we'll pull the injection pump and the plan will be to take that back to the shop and go through it there clean it detail it and maybe find a kit I haven't gotten a kit yet but I'm betting it's just kind of stuck and needs cleaning So there's the marks lined up right there. So now we can remove the injection pump and not worry about it being off timing wise. So we'll get it all put back together. We'll line that back up when we put it on and we should be good to go. Well, that's a good sign. That is the filter screen and it is completely clean. Happy to see that. this is what is this is that a hydraulic cooler water comes through here cools the hydraulic oil feed fed into there I think it is a hydraulic cooler finally there's our pump so there's like a a little notch and a hole for oil and that kind of faces up so oil can run down in it and get into that bushing. All right, the only thing that fell off on the inside was this uh, this bolt. That's okay though, I thought it was something worse. That area looks a little bit bare. Same with that area. So we're gonna take the injection pump back to the shop. I was gonna do it here, but it's kind of raining and really those are very, very detailed parts. And then we're gonna take this filter housing or filter mount, whatever to the store, find a fuel filter. We're also gonna look for, what are these? Napa Gold 1411s. So we need two of those. I'm not even gonna mess the air filter or hydraulic filter now. I probably won't even do the hydro or the oil filters until later, but now I know what they are, so. you may not know this but there is actually an actual workshop associated with salvage workshop if you haven't followed the channel since the beginning when I did a lot of projects in here you may not have seen it and I did a tour a couple of years ago of it it has changed a lot since especially the floor plan the layout and everything maybe at some point we'll do another but for today we're gonna be working right here at the bench so come on over and we'll check it out so we've got the injection pump here on the bench I don't have a rebuild kit, so let's just hope I don't ruin it, but I think that there's a couple of uh, rollers in there that are just stuck. And I don't know for sure. First thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna put this plate cover back on that hides the timing and put a couple plugs in some of these holes and we're gonna give this thing a bath. We're gonna wash it off, basically get to the point where it will be cleaner to work on and less junk falling in it.
All right, got the banjo bolts all back in, just enough to keep large particles of dirt. Put in this, the filter screen and the fuel inlet. I'm gonna pop off this O-ring. Should be good enough for now. Alright, we got the pump all cleaned up. Let's start getting some of these pieces taken off. So we're going to take off the fuel return. This is the fuel inlet from the fuel filter. This should have our screen, just like we saw. So that looks clean, very good sign. Now we're gonna take off this cover here and this should get us to the governor and the throttle springs. It says uh, 24 V right there, 24 volt. So inside here, there will be a solenoid for the fuel shutoff. And this would be your power wire and this is your ground. So that wire that we fixed ran to right here on this stud. So we took that off when we removed the pump, but that broken wire that we fixed did need to be repaired and plugged in right there. So this cover should just lift straight off. And then we have, that is the fuel shutoff solenoid. So when it is energized, it goes clunk and allows fuel when it's Power is released, it goes blink. And then there's a rubber gasket right in here, all the way around. And actually, if you look right here, you can see it's cracked right through there. And then right across here. It seemed to be working fine. I don't know. It does have a part number 26387. And then it says. 24 V right there. So it's a, for sure is a 24 volt. My guess is to get it off, you take these two caps off and this probably drops straight out. But for now, I'm gonna leave it alone. We're gonna leave it in that cover. So this gets us into the actual throttle. So when you push the gas or the pedal for more fuel, this is what happens. So it's like that. The fuel shut off pushes like this. And then when it's energized it releases this back so to get this throttle shaft out there's a little c-clip right here that we need to get out oh boy don't lose it because it's kind of a unique one Now, this should come out this way, and there's no ring on it, and then this should come out that way, and this basically hook should slide off the shaft. There's our throttle shaft. It goes straight up like that. And then this piece hooks kind of down and around that spring. It goes in like that. Now right here is a 
bolt slash pin. And it is that pin that you see right here that this spring is riding on, right there. All right, so we'll unscrew this here and pull this pin out. That's what that looks like. And then the spring has a few different pieces. Got the main spring. And there's a cup, another small spring, and a cap. And this piece goes through all of that. So we'll just stick it like this just to kind of keep it all together for now. All right, now we're going to remove the metering valve, which is right there. And it's got a small spring right on the shaft like that. Got a little surface rust around that section, but that should be okay. We'll clean it up. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this linkage in here. I don't think I'm going to need that out of my way for what we're doing. So now we're going to remove the back of the pump. All right, so this is the back. We're going to basically take these four flatheads off. They are about to break. So I did try and get them off earlier and almost broke three of them. I probably should get new ones. I don't have any right now. So let's just try and save these ones. There, we got that one. Let's see this one. Okay. That's the only one I could get by hand. There we go. There. So these are kind of a special deal. They got like a notch there. I don't know, they're flat heads and if you look at that, See the flathead, this whole side is about to break off. So I've seen some pumps having a hex head bolt for that back, similar to the cover bolts. So I may try and find some of those to replace these at some point. But right now, we're gonna work with what we have. There's the back plate. There's a little uh, dowel pin there. So that matches up like that. And here we've got an O-ring. And these are our, our veins, essentially. As this thing turns, those things contact the inside of that cylinder and do the pumping. I do not have a kit for this right now, so I'm going to try and reuse as much as I can and see if that gives us fuel back. Maybe at some point I'll pull it back apart again and do a full rebuild, but for now we just want to see if the machine will run. Each of these is spring-loaded. So it goes in like that. One thing to note on the veins is there is a CC on one side and a C on the other. One, this stands for clockwise, this sounds, stands for counterclockwise. It's the rotation of the pump. And the model number will tell you. So it's a DCGFC 
629. C meaning counter or meaning clockwise, sorry. If it was a DC GFCC 629, it would be a counterclockwise rotation. So whatever side faces out, once you remove that cover, is the rotation that it should be in properly. So this one should have the C facing out. And that's what it does. As you can see, there's the C, and there's our CC. There are a few other parts marked like that, but just something to know. I'm gonna leave these veins in there. There is a sp spring between each, these two and these two, that you can take apart. I'm just gonna leave it like that for right now. Now we gotta take this piece out. It should slide straight out. You gotta remove this half inch bolt. And this one. And now on the bottom there's this these two bolts. And I'm not totally sure what each of them does, so We'll just take them both off. So this upper one here is a 5 8 the one below it's a 9 16 That one's got no ring on it. All right, the best way I've seen to actually get this barrel out of here is to put these bolts in, these banjo bolts that are for the fuel injector lines, and then get a screwdriver on either side and pry it up and out, just like that. There we go. And there's the guts to our injection pump. I was like, where'd all our weights go? Well, I did it upside down, so they fell in. So normally this would be sitting right in here. So this is how it should look. Basically, as it spins faster and faster, these weights kick out like this. And then this thing this thing basically kind of moves outward. All right, we're going to take our banjo bolts that we used to pry it out back off. All right, now one last thing we gotta do is get this whole linkage out. And there's a brass nut on either side. There's an O-ring on either side of the shaft. goes in like this. There's not very many ways it can go in. And then you should be able to pull this whole governor spring assembly mechanism out. So that shaft slides right through here and fits in that groove. Only thing left is this bleeder screw. And 
and this has a washer with a built-in o-ring on it so kind of a special deal i think i'm gonna just not mess with it because this is how you bleed this thing out and i don't have another one yet i do need to get a rebuild kit and i probably will buy an updated uh, weight basket for it but at this moment i don't have them We'll go ahead and leave that thing in the vise, and we'll start working on the middle. Alright, so here's your weight basket. This little collar comes out. In the middle there is a O-ring washer, not O-ring, but a washer. And then all these six weights come out. And they go down in there like that. So that washer sits right in here, just like this. And then this piece sits on top of the washer, just like that. And as it moves, the weights kick out, pushes this thing forward. All right, I need to get some snap ring pliers and then we can take off this weight basket. There we go. So it tends to happen on these standardine injection pumps with the older, this like rubber collar, is it literally starts to break down. And all this little pieces of stuff just start falling into your injection pump, causing it to clog up. And when you get a new kit, it does come with a new one of these rubber pieces, but there's a new design that completely eliminates this like elastic whatever. Now I don't have one now, like I've said. It'll probably be worth buying one, but for now, I'm going to clean this up as best I can. And clean the inside of this out and we'll figure out where to go from there. It is definitely dirty in here. Well, that's looking cleaner. All right, now, this should be marked with an arrow. And that arrow, let me clean this up. Okay, so, with the arrow pointing clockwise, the way this essentially works, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as each one of these rollers contacts the flat spot, it pushes the roller back in, putting pressure allowing fluid to go into the line and then that's what gets the squirt of uh, diesel fuel up through the line to the injector. And then each one of the, the, the lobes, the low spots, where it fills back up with fluid and then waits to get compressed and squirt. So, you got to make sure that arrow is correct for your engine going the right way because on the other side, it has an arrow going the other way and can be used. And that arrow is right here. You gotta do it the right way. Whatever's facing out towards you when you open it up is the arrow that you need to worry about. It's all gummed up in here. I think this is our problem right here. All of this debris and inability for these things to slide, because they're not moving, barely, is the reason we're not getting fluid to our injectors. So I'm gonna spend some time, we're gonna clean this up as best I can. Now I lost two rollers. At least they're just right there. There they are.
So these things should be able to move and they're totally stuck in there. There we go. So I need to get these clean so they're moving. All right, so this is where the rollers and the pins are. So these things, they move out slightly, just enough to put pressure on the outer cam and they, as they squeeze in, they push fuel into each one of these ports, spraying it up to the diesel injectors. So, each one of these has a little collar that holds that roller in there. And each one of them seems to have a little bit of corrosion on the back that's holding it. There's a minus 10 on, on these, on all four of them. And I believe that needs to go up because three out of the four of them had it that way. But there's that corrosion, see right in the back there, and it doesn't take much to stick these up just because the tolerances are so tight. And then right in the middle, these are our pins that should move freely, and I can barely get them to move. Right in there, it's kind of rusty. Right in there, and right in there. That side's not as bad, but... So I'm betting, so this has probably four. It ain't moving at all. Some light oil in there. go. There's one of them. There. Here's the other one. And because this is a six cylinder, it's got four total. So these are not moving at all. And if these don't move, it doesn't pump fuel. There we go. Now they don't look bad either. They look nice and clean a little corrosion on them. Oh, interesting. These ones are smaller. Quite a bit smaller. Right there, there's a dot. That is where the small rollers go in. So we'll have to get some brushes and clean out the inside of that. We'll get some light oil in there and just work these pins in and out so they're moving freely. Now, you can remove these uh, these wings here. I don't know what they are called, but I'm not gonna mess with that because that is an adjustment for how far out the, the rollers move, and I do not wanna have to reset that. So whether it's right or wrong right now, I don't know, but at the end of the day, at the moment, I'm just gonna assume it's correct because I really think that the problem is just the corrosion that's kind of built up in this or just a slight bit of of uh, varnish that's built up from just sitting for so long. I don't believe our problem is it's out of time or whatever, but we can always deal with that later if it's an issue. So let's finish getting this cleaned up. Get all this gunk out of all these passages and
See that one's stuck. go. See that little bit of corrosion there? This is just making it stick to the back of this holder. Same with that one. That one wasn't too bad. That one was just slightly stuck. So, I don't see any pitting in these yet. So we're just gonna clean them up and see if we can reuse them. So there's no, no uh, pits in it. It's all just on top. Put it back in here and see if it slides well. So it should slide back and forth really well. And we'll spin it around this way. Next up, there's a little uh, clip in here. You gotta get off some of these weights out of the way. There's the clip. Now there are these little uh, little rings that catch that main shaft. Now the shaft should pull straight out. There are those two little half rings that catch in that groove there. And I just stuck this weight cage on there so I could set it down. But there's the shaft. So I wanna get all the corrosion off of this, pretty much everywhere. Make sure it turns nice and freely in here. Clean out each and every one of these injector passages. And then we should be ready to put it back together. All right, so I was just taking these plugs out, and underneath this one, there's actually a, 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 a rod. I'm not sure exactly what it does, if it's a, for metering or what, but I locked, red Loctite all three of these in there just like they were, but while I was doing that, I found something pretty interesting. Right here, it has a date, 1-22-94. Somebody scribed it right there. And more than likely, that is when this pump was rebuilt. And then there's another number down here that says 989. Nine, but I thought initially maybe that 989 was the date, but that 1-22-94 is pretty distinct. So, obviously it's been opened up at some point, but that is when this pump was in good shape, at least. So I thought that was kind of neat. I saw some scribe marks on a couple other pieces, but nothing that had like a full date like that. So, all right, start putting this back together. That spins nice and smooth.
and I can hear, because I got some uh, light oil, as I spin this, at each one of these holes I can hear a little, a little blip as the notch here opens up a passage for fuel at each one of those. Actually, no, it's uh, that hole. As that hole right there passes and hits the notch right below these, it's spinning around, and that would be how fuel would then get sent out to each injector line up to the injectors themselves. So, yeah, awesome, great sign. I'm gonna stick this on here for now. I'm just gonna get the bottom of this on. Drop these rings back down in there. There we go. Pop that ring, just like that. Oh yeah, those are moving nicely now. All right, we're gonna start by putting these small rollers in. And they go on the sides with that dot, like I mentioned. So I'll show you that they move nice and easy. You watch right here. And we want them going in and out of that, just like this. Just gotta be able to move freely in that bore. That one's good. Get those two in. And the bigger ones go in these holes. Now that one moves nice and free, the bigger ones. On both sides. And those were totally stuck before. All right, now we got those rollers in. Let's install, reinstall these bad boys. So it looks like you can put these in upside down. I'm putting the minus 10 on all of them facing up. I mean, they should all work fine. They're all, they're all rolling beautifully and tipping out. Should be okay. All right, next up this cam ring. And for now, this old weight basket is going back on. I don't exactly remember, but there's a notch on this shaft here, and I'm kind of just going to line that up with the little notch, and there's an L on the inside of this. Snap ring back down. Get our washer. Got all these weights cleaned up. And they basically kind of just hook under this washer.
And that goes like that. So now that's ready to put back in. Minus the assembly of this side. Now we're going to slide the housing back on. So I cleaned out the inside really well and got all the junk and varnish all cleaned up and off of it. All right, next up, we're going to stick in the metering valve, spring on it, goes down in that hole right there. And then that part of the governor slips right over that hole right there, just like that. Now you got the spring and its components, a cap, another small spring, another cap, and then the big spring. This goes right down here. You to keep all that together while you take the retaining pin, slide it through, and then thread that on. All right, now we're gonna take this, put it back in here this collar in there first and then these little weights there's a spring that holds them together those like so and the other side goes on top of that just like that then we have an o-ring we're reusing all the O-rings. There are a couple actually on the, the little governor shaft here that I replaced, but they all look good enough for now. I want to know if this thing runs. I don't want to spend any money on it. I just wanted to clean it, get it working, put it back. I do think I'm going to flip this O-ring. I think that's the side that was out. I'm going to put the that side out this time. And then here's the back. Essentially, I've already got the fuel screen screwed into it, and then this little metering plate fits into that notch. And so you gotta have it fit that notch. So you basically have to rotate this until it's over here. Actually, I guess it's the other side. And then these bolts hold that back cover on so three out of the four of these are about broken i don't have new ones and so i'm gonna just reuse them i'm gonna tighten them down with a set of vice grips like i got them off and then if this thing needs to be rebuilt later i'll buy new ones when i get the kit and whatnot so but for now, it'll work. Now we're gonna put the throttle shaft back in. There we go. That's how it goes. Got a little C clip thing. There. 
There's your throttle. Governor. Alright, now the top cover is all clean to put back together. And we got the three bolts to hold it on. The banjo bolts and this basically the way it works is one of these washers goes around on one side of the uh, injector line and this one goes on the other and they're called banjo bolts because back in the day people used to play banjos with them and if you believe that one I got another one for you so we're just gonna stick these in here just so we don't lose them and to kind of help keep that hole clean between now and when we get it put back on. All right, we're gonna stick this collar back on. It's got this little oil groove that feeds oil down into that bushing. That has to go up. Go something like that. There's already an O-ring on that collar there. Got a flat washer and a lock washer. Sometimes gloves get in the way. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and put this gear in. This, I couldn't just leave the gear installed in the machine because there wasn't enough room to be able to pull the pump off this shaft. It does have two umbrella seals and I don't have new ones. So we're just going to lube it up a little bit and just be gentle. Just try and get that whole lip in there. The first one's a hard one, the second one's easy because it'll push itself through. But. Well, I have an idea. I'm going to take this off because I know I can get it on in the pump. I've tried it, but I do not know if I can get it through that bushing and that's what's gonna end up ruining this. So we'll take these two nuts loose, and pull off this collar here. So we'll take this shaft, basically push it through that, and we'll put the seal on now. So they need to be facing opposite one another. There we go. So now I got that through this bushing. That should be good. There we go. Now there's a notch in here, and the notch on this gear will only go in one way. So I'll just turn this slightly and push in right, right there. And now we're all the way in. Let's get these uh, nuts back on. So now right here in this viewing window, we can see this line right there. That one will not move. And then we'll turn the pump until the line on that, the other side lines up with that line. And that'll be how we need to install it when we go to put this in. There it is. Right, right there. The other thing that'll change a little bit is the way in which this tightens. There's a little bit of play there. We'll get that on there. We'll get it all lined up approximately, and then we'll get those lines lined up and we'll be able to set it in there. But for now, I think we've got it all clean and ready to try. We're gonna put this little cover over the 
timing port. All right, now if you listen, you can hear the those rollers kicking out. Hear the little tick, 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 tick. So in there, those rollers are kicking out and doing their job, which before when you spun this, there was no noise at all. And so it, they were all just seized up and weren't working properly. So I'm not gonna guarantee that this thing's gonna run, but I'm gonna guarantee that this thing's gonna run. So. Heck, yeah. All right, so here's our fuel filter housing. And those other two that I tried did not have the small enough threads to fit on that. Here's our original one. I mean, that says AC. I mean, I don't see any other numbers here. It was blue at one point. I wonder if maybe we can get a little more of the paint off. Probably not without ruining it. The numbers were probably right where I stabbed it, but. Yeah, I'm gonna take it all off. But anyway, yeah, those two that I took did not fit. I do have a Caterpillar one that I didn't get to use for a project. I think it's gonna work. See if this thread's on. It does. That seat's up there nice. Assuming there's enough room depth-wise, we'll use that filter. And I do have, this is the one that the rubber gasket that was already on here. I'm gonna reuse it because it's all that I've got. Let's see if that still fits in there. Yeah, it looks like that rubber still seats. Good. So the outer O-ring seats. That inner ring is how the filters keep fuel from bypassing the fuel, fuel filter. So if you don't have this ring in there, you're technically running it without a fuel filter. So make sure you got the right ring in there. This one will work for us. Good enough. Yeah, that's why I keep stuff. Hi, pups. So for you, any of you that don't know, I have a whole pack of Weimaraners. And these are two of them. We got Scout. She's the blue one, which is this dark charcoal color. And this is Maverick. He's silver. And so, yeah. They're my crazy Wimes. And yeah, hi. Oh, hi. Yeah. I know. I know. Crazy doggies, come on, come on. So yeah, that's the end of today. I got the injection pump put back together. And so I figured I'd kind of do just a short little walk around of my shop. It has changed a lot, mainly because of this. So a friend gave me this car lift and I did a bunch of work to it, didn't film any of it, but this used to be where my machine shop was. And so I completely moved the entire machine shop over there and got rid of a ton of machines. I was tired of having all those old engine lays that were in my way and not being able to use my shop. So that was one of the reasons you didn't see content from me for a while because it was so much work getting this all done. But now this is the big hangar door right here. So this slides open. I can pull projects in here and use this lift. So I've got kind of my press station here, a couple hydraulic ones, Arbor Press, Arbor Press, hydraulic Arbor Press. Got a metal brake right there. There's the big anvil, parts washer that I just got done using. A little Mercedes diesel, another little diesel, and then a whole bunch of parts and miscellaneous hardware. There's the big compressor that runs the whole shop. Small milling machine, just a, a made in Taiwan version. Over there, I've got my 2x72, welder, Beverly shear. That's the three-phase panel for three-phase out here in the shop. Got a couple big Joes right there and right there. And then 
Over here, we'll walk towards the machine shop. So I traded a buddy for one of the engine lathes and a few other things for this awesome dual bandsaw. And my favorite part about the old school duals is that you can cut meteorites. Yeah, just in case I need to cut meteorites, I have the saw that'll do it. So on this side, we've got horizontal bandsaw, vertical bandsaw, punch, and just a short selection of my vices. I have a vice for vices. And then over here is the machine shop. And I've got this drywall carton away. But this is my Candy Auto Camelback Drill Press, Cincinnati Hydro Shift 17 lathe. There's my Hendy old school lathe. I have a Master Mill milling machine. And then this is a Van Norman duplex milling machine. Cool thing about it, it can be vertical or horizontal. And then all the parts and miscellaneous stuff organized in cabinets. This is the main bench area kind of back here, right in this middle area, right in this middle area, I want to put a big welding table, like four by eight size, and then have that set up here. And then I call this the cove. A lot of these signs and decorations are all decorations from, you know, basically stuff I've moved, you know, a bunch of them were on that hanger door that I've had screwed shut for a long time. And then many of you may recognize all of the pony motor parts that go to Old Red. I haven't gotten around to finishing that yet. I haven't gotten the new sprocket on. We'll get to it at some point, but I have not given up on that project. So that is a very fast tour of my shop. And for those that are interested, I'd be willing to do a more in-depth one. But this is shop number one. I now have a second shop that I'm outfitting and, and basically getting set up. And so you'll start seeing some footage of that coming very soon. But for today, <whistles> come here guys, come on, figure it out. There you are. Nice scout. Hi, Matt. My Weimariners and I would like to thank you for watching and stay tuned because we got a bunch more to go on the big old monster wheel letter. Speaking of that, what are we going to call that thing? Anybody got any name ideas for for the Alice Chalmers wheel loader? I have. I don't want to call it Alice. I know Matt at Diesel Creek calls his fat Alice. Love it, but not going to steal his name. So let me know ideas on that old beast and see if we can figure out something to call it. Anyway, you guys have a great one. And I look forward to seeing you guys back on the next project here at Salvage Workshop.